My name is Blake Hawthorne. I'm the clerk of the Supreme Court of Texas. Welcome to the induction ceremony for new members of the State Bar of Texas. Before we begin, just a few housekeeping matters to go over. In order to be enrolled as a member of the State Bar, you must complete the online registration process. Once you've registered, the award group will send you an email with instructions on how to claim your wall certificate and, if you so choose, how to order a frame with your certificate. The State Bar will mail your bar card to you separately. If you have not yet registered, please go to the State Bar's website and do so. Also, by order of the Supreme Court of Texas, you must complete the Justice James A. Baker Guide to the Basics of Law Practice, which is administered by the Texas Center for Legal Ethics. You can register and take the course online if you have not already done so. Now, if you will turn to the back of your program, you will see the oath that you will take today. The oath in the program is yours to keep. You do not need to hand it to me afterwards. You don't need to mail it in. It's yours to keep. I recommend uh, that if you frame your license, uh, that you affix the oath to the back of the frame because the State Bar Act requires that the oath be affixed to your license. Not exactly sure what that means, but you're all about to be lawyers and you can figure that out, right? That concludes our housekeeping matters, and the courts will be out shortly. All rise. Oh yay, oh yay, oh yay. The Honorable, the Supreme Court of Texas, and the Honorable, the Court of Criminal Appeals of Texas. All persons having business before the Honorable, the Supreme Court of Texas, and the Honorable, the Court of Criminal Appeals of Texas, are admonished to draw near and give their attention, for the courts are now sitting. God save the state of Texas and these honorable courts. Please be seated. Good morning, I'm Nathan Heck, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Texas. And I am Sharon Keller, Presiding Judge of the Court of Criminal Appeals. The Supreme Court and the Court of Criminal Appeals welcome you. Our two courts convene in this special joint session to celebrate the 2,051 women and men who have passed the July bar examination. All of us honor these men and women, lawyers at last. This ceremony is a time for rejoicing for them their wives, husbands, parents, children, and yes, their creditors. <laughs> the ceremony will be short, but I trust meaningful. We will hear from the president of the State Bar of Texas, the president of the Texas Young Lawyers Association, and to give the response of your class, the person who scored the highest on the bar exam. Before we hear from them, we want to acknowledge the representatives of the Texas law schools that have joined us today. All of the Texas law schools are represented here by their deans or their representatives. They honor us and you with their presence. Would you all please stand and be recognized? Please give them a round of applause. This ceremony would not be possible without the hard work and dedication of our staff, the State Bar of Texas, and the Board of Law Examiners. We thank all of you for making this ceremony a success. Would you please stand and be recognized? And please give them a round of applause. And now I call on Justice Brett Busby from our court to present the Access to Justice Law Student Pro Bono Award 
and Law School Commitment to Service Award. Justice Busby. Thank you, Chief, and good morning. It's a pleasure to be here to see the new faces that will be making their mark on the legal landscape of Texas in the coming years. I'm Brett Busby, a Justice of the Supreme Court of Texas and the Tex uh, liaison from the court to the Texas Access to Justice Commission. I'm here to present two awards that reflect the goal that the court has charged the commission to carry out, that all Texans should have access to justice regardless of income. The first award is the Law School Commitment to Service Award. Created in 2007, it honors a Texas law school for exemplary efforts in promoting pro bono service and educating their students about the many barriers low-income Texans face in accessing justice. This award is always a difficult one for the commission to bestow because all the law schools in Texas serve their communities in indispensable ways. This year, the winner of the 2022 Access to Justice Law School Commitment to Service Award on the eve of their 100th year educating lawyers is the South Texas College of Law, Houston. <laughs> As you can imagine, housing and unemployment have been uncertain for many Texans in the last few years, and South Texas College of Law's clinics have had a dramatic impact on their community by helping with these challenges. During the pandemic, South Texas's eviction clinics partnered with legal aid and other law schools in Houston to develop a right to counsel model that served more than 5,000 residents facing the loss of their home. They also trained more than 120 legal aid providers from across the state in an online program focused on lawyering skills in eviction defense. The school also partnered with legal aid in Harris County <laughs> to create their Make It Right program which helped expunge criminal offenses that would keep people from finding meaningful employment. But the South Texas faculty and students have even reached back in time to secure posthumous presidential pardons for uh, 110 African-American soldiers who were court-martialed more than 100 years ago. To those of you sitting in the audience who had a hand in these efforts, thank you and congratulations. And it's my honor to present this award to Dean Michael Berry, who's here to accept it on behalf of South Texas College of Law. Dean, if you'll come and join us. The second honor of the day is the, law, the Access to Justice Law Student Pro Bono Award. Also created in 2007, this award recognizes a Texas law student whose strong commitment to pro bono serves as an example to other attorneys and has a tangible impact on the community. The award also comes with a $2,000 stipend. This year's recipient is notable not solely for the amount of pro bono work she provided individually, which was substantial, but also for the pro bono work she enabled. Her instructors at St. Mary's University School of Law recognized that she had an affinity for building relationships as early as her first year of law school. She served in the university's mentor program, helping first year students navigate the rigors of legal education and as a teaching assistant in the civil justice clinic. She served as president of the Student Bar Association, using her skills to build consensus between various groups and share her passion for expanding access to justice. Throughout the pandemic, she coordinated virtual pro bono activities, making it possible for more people to get the help they needed. She also worked with community groups to help develop the enhanced library card, which can serve as an ID and provides an invaluable bridge between being homeless and being able to sign a lease and being unemployed and getting hired. In all of these efforts, she was able to see beyond her client's list of legal needs and be, in her words, someone who cared to listen and to help. She's already planning how to help others upon graduation, commenting that she hopes she's able not only to continue to incorporate pro bono work into her legal career, but also remind those around her of its importance. Please join me in applauding the inspiring efforts of the 2022 Access to Justice Law Student Pro Bono recipient, Morgan Starr. Morgan, would you please come and join us?
Once again, congratulations to our honorees, and congratulations to all of you seated here today. Welcome to the profession, and I'm excited to see how you make a better Texas. Thank you. Thank you, Justice Busby. In Texas, all lawyers are members of the state bar. I now call on Laura Gibson, president of the State Bar of Texas, to welcome each of you into the legal profession. President Gibson. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Laura Gibson. I've been licensed as a lawyer in the state of Texas since May of 1985, and I've not been to a new lawyer induction ceremony since then. Uh, I'm a partner in the Houston office of Denton's, I'm a trial lawyer, and I'm board certified in labor and employment law. I'm the 142nd president of the State Bar of Texas and the eighth woman to hold that position. It is my great honor, thank you, we, we, we need more women. And I'm delighted that my predecessor, Sylvia Barunda Firth, was the seventh woman, and my successor, Cindy Tisdale, it will be the ninth woman. So we've never had two women in a row, much less three women. So we're on a roll. <laughs> this is a big day for you guys. It's a momentous occasion, one that you have worked so hard for. And during a pandemic, nonetheless, you have grit and fortitude, and it will serve you well. And never forget that. You've studied thousands of hours answered hundreds of questions, graduated from law school, and passed the bar exam. You are ready to begin your professional career. By taking the oath today, you become one of nearly 109,000 active members of the State Bar of Texas. And the State Bar of Texas, in my view, is the best bar in the country. You are joining an elite group of attorneys who are united in our fealty and allegiance to the rule of law, our loyalty to the Constitution and our commitment to represent our clients to the best of our abilities. Moreover, you have the privilege, and it is a privilege, of practicing in a self-governing profession with an independent grievance system under the umbrella of the State Bar that is mission-driven to, among other things, not only improve the quality of legal services, but to assure that all Texans have equal access to justice, and to educate the public about the rule of law. If you are a first-generation lawyer, the first of your kind in your family, what an outstanding accomplishment. Give yourself a round of applause for that achievement. When I speak to law students who are just starting down this, their path, as I did in August in new uh, orientations, I make sure to point out that it can be an isolating and intimidating journey to be the first. And if they don't know a lawyer, they know a lot of them now, and I'm happy to be one of the first to meet you. My only ask is that after um, 37 years of practicing law, I can no longer keep up with the young lawyers I meet. So if, you, if we encounter one another after this ceremony, please let me know that we first met at your induction ceremony. Along this journey, you will need to identify mentors, lawyers who inspire you, who can help guide you. It could be another lawyer in your firm or a lawyer in your community whom you respect or an organization such as Ends of the Court or your local and state bar associations. Don't be shy. If I were you, if I were standing in your shoes, I would identify an elder lawyer in your community, somebody who has lived a long life and practiced law well, and might benefit from somebody who has the, the skills you do, which is knowledge of technology and how to get things done, and try to, to benefit one another from that symbiotic relationship, because you will be giving that lawyer as much information and guidance as that lawyer will be giving you. So it is truly a win-win relationship. I also want you to be uh, inspired and remember that you are an inspiration to others. 
Seek out not only those who can help you, but also those that you can help. I want to encourage you to remember to give a helping hand when you can do so by participating in pro bono activities. Those are great opportunities to learn in areas that you might not getting exposure to in your paid job. So please remember to help others and they will help you. As they say, to whom much is given, much more is required. And insisting those underrepresented members of our community is not just doing good, but it feels good to know that you are making a difference. As the promising young lawyers of our profession, the State Bar of Texas wants to help prepare you to be leaders, not only in your fields, but also ultimately of this Bar Association. I mentioned the mission of the State Bar of Texas earlier. Let me tell you what it requires. We support the administration of the legal system. We assure all citizens equal access to justice. We foster high standards of ethical conduct for lawyers. We enable our members to better serve their clients and the public. We educate the public about the rule of law. And we promote diversity in the administration of justice and the practice of law. The State Bar leadership and staff are always working to generate programs and initiatives that will support lawyers in their lives and their practices and improve the quality of legal services in our state. To help you in your career and in life, the Bar offers a number of member benefits, including free legal research through FastCase and its docket alarm feature. Don't underestimate the value of that uh, benefit. Go to, go to our... Um, online publications and you can find it and it's something you definitely want to use to the benefit of your clients by reducing the cost of legal uh, services to them. We also have a career center where you can post your resume and search for open positions. We have a free ethics hotline or help helpline when you need advice on ethical obligations. Don't forget that resource because sometimes when you're in the trenches and you have to move quickly, you don't know the right thing to do and there's no reason not to avail yourself of this important research. We have new business leads through the Lawyer Referral and Immigration Service. We have an online law practice management tools through our Texas Bar Practice website and many other useful programs. My friend Chris Ritter, who's the president of the Texas Young Lawyers Association, will tell you about next. You can uh, join a State Bar section to network with peers and take part in mentorship and pro bono opportunities to help us advance the cause of equal access to justice. This journey can be very stressful at times, so there's very, one other very important program that I want you to know about. It's called the Texas Lawyers Assistance Program, known as TLAP. Hopefully you knew that was a resource to you when you were in law school, and it's a resource to you now as you become a lawyer. TLAP helps lawyers, judges, and law students who are experiencing mental health and substance use issues. It's strictly confidential. It includes crisis counseling, referrals, peer assistance, and general wellness guides to help Texas lawyers deal with stress and maintain a healthy lifestyle. As you'll read in my December column, it's imperative that we all secure our own oxygen masks first. If we don't do that, we can't help others. Help is available. You can know more about TLAP through TLAPHelps.org. Finally, we are extremely excited and proud to welcome you as the newest Texas lawyers. We are with you now and always for you, we always will be here for you along this journey. And for those family members who are here in the audience, thank you for all you have done to support your soon-to-be lawyer. I love that we have little bitty babies crawling in the front row. And for the young lawyer who did that and obviously earned the right to have his family be on, or her family to be on the front row, uh, you have done it with your hands tied behind your back and high heels on. So congratulations. Welcome to the Texas Bar Association. Thank you, President Gibson, and thanks to the State Bar for helping to instill high standards of professionalism in Texas lawyers. Texas has an extraordinarily active, nationally acclaimed association of young lawyers here to welcome you as new attorneys 
is Michael J. Ritter, president of the Texas Young Lawyers Association. President Ritter. Thank you, Chief Justice Hecht, and may it please the Honorable Supreme Court of Texas, the Court of Criminal Appeals of Texas, President Gibson, our distinguished members of the bar, and our newest members of the State Bar of Texas. One of my favorite memes introduces the Inigo Montoya method for networking. You begin with a polite greeting, state your name, establish a relevant personal link, and manage expectations. The method originates from The Princess Bride. Has anybody seen that movie, show of hands? Yes, all right, so I don't have to explain it too much. For those who haven't seen it, it's a 1987 cult classic film. The plot's hard to describe, but it's great, I recommend it. But there's a character whose name is Inigo Montoya, and his drive, his objective in the film is to find the six-fingered man who murdered his father. So throughout the film, he rehearses what he's gonna say when he meets a six-fingered man, and he says, hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. <laughs> so other than the death threat, the Inigo Montoya method is actually a starting point for networking and getting to know people. <laughs> I'll go first. Good morning, everyone. My name is Michael J. Ritter, and I am the president of the Texas Young Lawyers Association, AKA TYLA. You are all now members of TYLA and will be for your first 12 years of practice. Prepare to be amazed by all the awesome things that TYLA and the State Bar can do for you. So as TYLA president, I frequently get asked the question, uh, how can I best prepare myself in this first year of practice to set myself up for long-term success as a lawyer? And I usually give some variation of uh, this answer. Be familiar with all the services and resources and programs that the State Bar and the Texas Young Lawyers Association have to offer. A lot of attorneys uh, either don't or can't make it to this ceremony. So 10, 20, 30 years into their practices, every time their time comes to pay their State Bar dues, they wonder, what has the State Bar ever done for me? But the answer is a lot. The State Bar actually does quite a bit. Um, TYLA is the public service arm of the State Bar of Texas. In addition to our public service project, we also have numerous free resources for TYLA members. The first, which I would like to bring to your attention, is a checklist for your first year of practice. This is our newest resource. You can find it at our table um, after the ceremony that walks you through all the things that uh, Blake Hawthorne, uh, clerk of the Supreme Court, mentioned in the housekeeping matters with QR codes so you can just check off all the things that you absolutely have to do in order to maintain your license during your first year. In addition to those requirements, there's also recommendations for how you can set yourself up to take advantage of uh, the free CLE that TYLA has to offer among our other programs. The second thing I wanted to bring to y'all's attention is our Grievance and Malpractice 101. I'm talking to a group of people who took the MPRE much more recently than anybody else, so y'all are all set, but that does not mean you won't encounter somebody in your practice that files a grievance against you that may be frivolous or not. Regardless of the situation, if you're ever in that situation, and some of you will find yourself in that situation, I had my first grievance filed against me last year, uh, it's helpful to have that resource, just know that the State Bar is here to help. TYLA has a grievance in Malpractice 101 that walks you through the grievance process. Third is our attorney wellness website. President Gibson had previously mentioned TLAP, the Texas Lawyers Assistance Program. TYLA also maintains a website that has videos and tips and recommendations for managing stress and anxiety and establishing healthy eating and sleeping patterns and for how to reach out to get help when you need it. Number four, one of my favorites, it's an oldie but a goodie. I picked it up 12 years ago at this ceremony. It's called Office in a Flash. It is a flash drive that can, has all the starting documents you need to set up your own law firm. I carried that USB around with me everywhere and I said, if I have one more bad day at this job, I'm just gonna plug this sucker in and start my own law firm. <laughs> and I did one day and it was great. So we have resources that can help you wherever you are at in your practice. You can also check out many more of our guides on our website at tyla.org. 
President Gibson had mentioned a lot of the benefits of the state bar already, but I'd like to uh, mention a few more. Um, as young lawyers and paying back those student loans, you can really benefit from all the discounts you can get through being a state bar member. Uh, free, uh, sorry, free accidental death insurance, uh, death and death membership insurance for $10,000. That's fantastic. Why not sign up for that? Um, discounts on your Costco membership and the luxury bus Vaughn Lane, which is my favorite. Another benefit of the State Bar of Texas is that as young lawyers, we have voting seats at the table and the management of the affairs of the State Bar of Texas. I, along with President-elect of TYLA, Laura Pratt, and our immediate past president, Janine Rispoli, all three of us have voting seats on the State Bar Board of Directors to ensure that the decisions that are being made now are sustainable for your practices and uh, young lawyers' practices into the future. Lastly, the TYLA and uh, the State Bar provide incredible opportunities to get to know other attorneys and networking and coming together uh, as attorneys because we're often in contentious spaces with each other. Uh, the State Bar is where we come together and maintain the high quality of services that we provide to the public. Many young lawyers struggle with making and establishing meaningful relationships with other lawyers. In my first years of practice, I was certainly one of those lawyers. I didn't have confidence in myself as a person or as a professional. I felt that being my authentic self and fully out of the closet uh, might hurt my chances at getting you know, jobs or professional advancement. And I just didn't know how to do that networking thing. But that's where TYLA and the State Bar can help you. We're here to help you now in the practice of law and throughout your legal careers. So here's the part where it gets a little bit awkward. I've just described a bunch of benefits that the State Bar can offer you. Will you do me a favor? It's, 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 it's an easy favor. So head nodding, great. If you will, you pull out your phones. I see several people on their phones already, so this should be an easy task. <laughs> like, this guy has talked for way too long. Okay, so pull out your phone, uh, open up your favorite social media app out of the, the following four, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. Type in the search box, it's Texas Young Lawyers, and click follow. That's the favor I ask of you. If you haven't done it now, I hope that you'll do it uh, today uh, to keep updated on all the benefits and programs that TYLA has to offer. So, thanks to Inigo Montoya, the bar for self-introductions is quite low, especially on the managed expectations front. Although there's simply no right way to network or to create meaningful relationships with other lawyers, I'll help you take advantage of, uh, advantage of all the benefits that the State Bar and TYLA have to offer. I wanna congratulate you all on being here on this momentous occasion, and I am thrilled to welcome you to the State Bar of Texas and to the Texas Young Lawyers Association. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, President Ritter, and thanks to the Texas Young Lawyers Association for its service to the bar and to the public. It is customary for the person who made the highest score on the bar exam to respond for your class. Before I introduce him, I will recognize the three who received the third and second highest scores. The third highest score was tied by Elizabeth Brown, a graduate of Duke University School of Law, who is here, and Mary Schultz, a graduate of Southern Methodist University School of Law, who cannot be present. Ms. Brown. The second highest score was received by Ryan Miller, a graduate of Brigham, Brigham Young University, J, uh, J. Reuben Clark Law School. Mr. Miller. <laughs> the highest score was posted by a graduate of Texas A&M University School of Law, <laughs> Alexander Jablonski. Mr. Jablonski, you may respond for your class.
thank you, Chief Justice Hecht, justices, and everyone else in attendance today. I appreciate the opportunity to speak today, even though the reason I'm here is spending wildly too much time studying on a pass-fail test. <laughs> Truthfully, I was surprised when I learned I received the highest score. Knowing what I know now, I probably would have spent a few less hours this summer studying. <laughs> but in all seriousness, congratulations to everyone that passed the bar exam in July 2022. Today is an exciting day, for it's the day we finally become attorneys. We've spent years on this goal, and really it's just the beginning, because we are entering a new career in the practice of law. But it's just remember to operate with integrity and give back to our communities. We also must acknowledge that we did not make it here alone. I believe I can speak for all the new attorneys today in saying thank you to everyone that's came out in support today. And with that, I'd like to specifically thank a few people. First, I would like to thank my mom and stepdad for the unwavering support throughout the years. I'd also like to thank my sister, her boyfriend Isaac, my uncle Ed, and my aunt Kathy for all coming out today. And I would also like to thank everyone who assisted me throughout the years at Texas A&M, especially Bob Wesersby and Professor B. Again, thank you very much and congratulations to everyone. Thank you, Mr. Javosky. We have come at last to the moment for which you've been waiting. Mr. Augustin Rivera, Jr. from the Board of Law Examiners will present to the court a list of the successful examinees. Mr. Rivera. May it please the courts, Mr. Chief Justice, Madam Presiding Judge, Associate Justices and Judges. I'm honored to serve as the Chair board of the Texas Board of Law Examiners and feel extremely happy to be here today. Before I take care of my official duties, I'd like to invoke a moment of personal privilege. First, I want to acknowledge that despite the fact that the last three years have been anything but ordinary, and in the face of incredible challenges, you've demonstrated extraordinary resilience, and here you are. And like Alex, there are many, many support teams here today celebrating in this moment. And I would like to especially acknowledge everybody that was a member of a support team, because you see, this, this year for me, it was personal. I too was a member of a support team, and I have a daughter who's sitting in the audience today. A few humble thoughts. When things get hard, and they will, keep working at it. You already know how to do that. Second, like Mr. Ritter said, and Ms. Gibson pointed out, never ever hesitate to reach out and ask for help. Whenever you fall, we'll be here waiting, ready to help. And third, Wherever you go, whatever you do, just do your best. It's always worked for you, it always will. And so now, I hereby certify, Mr. Chief Justice, that as of this date, the persons who names, whose names are on this list that I'll be presenting you with have successfully passed the July 2022 Texas Bar Exam and have completed all the other requirements necessary for admission to the State Bar of Texas. May I approach, sir? Please. Thanks. Thank you. It is now my privilege to administer to you the lawyer's oath. The first part of the oath is very old and has been taken by every lawyer in Texas. With it, you swear to do th three things, to support the United States and Texas constitutions, to honestly demean yourselves in the practice of the law, and to discharge your duties to your clients to the best of your ability. In 2015, the 84th legislature added a fourth part to the oath. 
that you will conduct yourselves with integrity and civility in dealing and communicating with the court and all parties. While this has always been a lawyer's responsibility, the words have been added to solemnize the Texas lawyer's dedication to these ideals affirmed in the Texas lawyer's creed. I charge you to recall in all your practice the words of the oath you take today. You should repeat them after me, stating your name where I state mine. You may choose to substitute the word affirm for the word swear and to omit the last line. Please stand and raise your right hands. I, Nathan Heck, do solemnly swear that I will support the constitutions of the United States and of this state, that I will honestly demean myself in the practice of the law, that I will discharge my duties to my clients to the best of my ability, and that I will conduct myself with integrity and civility in dealing and communicating with the court and all parties, so help me God. Congratulations. Congratulations to each of you. We're proud to welcome you into the profession. The State Bar will provide refreshments for you, your family, and friends immediately following these ceremonies on level three, the next level up. Information booths have been set up by the State Bar to explain the many services available to you. From this day forward, you are the voice and the instrument for the rule of law. Whether you are prosecuting or defending an individual charged with transgressions against society, representing a party in a civil dispute, drafting a contract, a deed or will, or giving other legal counsel to a client, everything you do contributes to a republic in which the rights to life, liberty, and property have displaced reliance on class, heredity, wealth, and military might. You therefore have a special responsibility, not only to those you represent, but to our profession and to this great experiment in democracy. I hope your practice will be meaningful and that in the words of the great justice, Oliver Wendell Holmes, you will live greatly in the law. Congratulations on this milestone and thanks to everyone for joining us in celebration. The clerk will adjourn the courts. All rise. Oh yay, oh yay, oh yay. The Honorable, the Supreme Court of Texas and the Honorable, the Court of Criminal Appeals of Texas now stand adjourned. Congratulations, let the celebration begin.